yoga up and then just start to find that comfortable seated position for a couple of minutes. Just taking a minute to center. Oh, take a couple of nice deep breaths, shrug off the day. I know it's still early on the West Coast, right? But, oh. And then take a moment to just sit maybe in gratitude, in light. It is election day, right? That can bring up can bring up some feelings, some emotions. I think this year more than even years past. So maybe taking a moment just to sit with any feelings that you have related to the topic. Welcome those of you joining us. And remembering that we can all do our individual part, right? but we also have to be able to release and let go of those things that we have no control over. So taking just maybe one more minute here to be in this present moment in control of this moment and this moment only. Allowing yourself to connect down into the earth through the tailbone, the root chakra, and then lengthening up through the spine, through those chakral energy systems along the spine, pulling tall through the crown of our head. Take the shoulders and roll them up and back. Feel that external rotation of the shoulders, that opening through the chest. And then trying to maintain that open chest as you bring the palms of your hands together at your heart. Taking a moment here to set your intention for this day, this class, this week, this month. Right. It is really up to you. Maybe you set the same intention every time, right? Because that's your, your focus. When you're ready, allow the chin to tuck down towards your chest and softly allow the eyes to open. And release the hands down to the floor. And then let's just take a little light twisting. Welcome Cam, Alyssa, Kelsey, welcome Alexis, and of course Linda is here, welcome, welcome. Here comes Lindsay, I believe, joining us, yay, from vacation. Now as you come back to the right, pause there, allow the body to twist a little bit deeper. You can use that left hand on that right quad to help assist the, the twist but pull tall through the crown of the head as you're twisting. And pausing there for a couple of breaths, glancing over that right shoulder. And on our exhale, we'll come back center, taking that twist over to the left, pulling tall, using that right hand on that left quad to deepen that twist just slightly, pausing a couple of breaths there. And exhaling, make our way center. Inhale, the arms come up. And on our exhale, hinge over to the right. Testing the balance here a little bit first as both arms are lifted into the air. Try to actively press down through the left hip. Then let that right hand come down and you can deepen that twist through the left side of the body. Taking the inhale, on the exhale, just rotating the belly and the chest towards the floor. Just feel that gentle twisting through the spine as we reach through the left hand. Pause for a couple of breaths. And then on our inhale, opening that chest back center. And on our exhale, 
We'll bring this over to the other side, starting with those hands extended. Feel that core activate to support you. And then letting that left hand come down, stretching deeper through the right arm, plus through that right hip. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, twisting not just from the chest, but from the belly, reaching through that right arm. Inhale, opening the chest, and exhale, pulling up, releasing the hands down to your side. I love your dog, Linda, so cute. And come on over to all fours. So taking a moment, spread the fingers nice and wide. Now you can always make a fist with the hands. You can always come onto your forearms. You can always do cat cows in a seated position if you have any wrist issues. Otherwise here in this all four position on that inhale, let that belly drop, lift and open up through the heart. And on the exhale, pull the navel to the spine. So working a bit here to lengthen our breath so trying to lengthen the inhale as we come down through cow and lengthen the exhale. Oh, I love it, Alexis. Your little one's doing it with us as you round that through cow. Deep inhaling. And deep cleansing exhale. Now, if you like on that exhale, right, we can't hear you. You're all on mute. It can feel really nice to do what we call lion's breath, opening the mouth, letting the tongue hang out and go. <sighs> and then on the inhale, deep inhale through the nose. And on the exhale. <sighs> and maybe one more time through that inhale. And exhaling. <sighs> Inhale, allow that spine to come back to neutral. On your exhale, begin to set those glutes back towards your heels. Reach the arms forward, nice long stretch through the shoulders. Think about pressing your tailbone one direction as you pull the crown of the head the opposite, anchoring the shoulder blades in so the ears pull away from the shoulders. Your knees are probably slightly parted here. Then on our inhale, pulling back up to all fours, allow the hands to come underneath the shoulders. We're gonna inhale the left arm up, twisting to the left, gaze up at the left thumb. And on our exhale, thread the needle, bring the left arm under and inhale the right arm up. Pausing here for a couple of breaths. So we're really getting twisty today, if you haven't noticed. Take an inhale. On the exhale, we'll plant this right hand down, press up, pull the left hand through. And on our inhale, right arm reaches, twist up, gaze at the thumb. Exhale, right arm swoops under, come down onto the right shoulder. Inhale, left arm comes up. And pause for a breath or two. Welcome, Jenar. Take the inhale. Exhale, left hand comes down, pressing up. Right hand comes down, inhale, curl the toes under, press back, downward facing dog. So take some time here in your down dog, and this can be a little bit free for all. So if you like pedaling your feet, if you like pausing up on the toes and really kind of massaging into the toes, or my personal favorite, I like to lift my heels, bend my knees, and let my hips drop side to side. And so I just call this dance the dog so that you can move kind of any way that feels good to you for maybe 60 seconds or so. So just allow yourself. I always say don't think too much about it because when we think about it, then we we're kind of get like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Just let yourself move. A couple of more breaths here. Just going to check the message. Ah, I got it, Alexa. So the puppy was saying hi to you. I thought the puppy was saying hi to me. <laughs> so adorable. 
want to hug that dog. I love to hug dogs and babies. Uh, and then we'll start to make our way back into that downward facing dog. So you can start with your knees bent, your heels lifted a little bit in order to shift your chest back towards your quad. Now, if being in this down dog for so long, right, can be bothersome if you've still got some wrist issues. Um, I know that a couple of you do. Feel free to be in down in child's pose. Feel free to be in all fours. We are about to come out of this down dog. So begin to lift the glutes up, lower the heels, if all that feels good. Oh, then on our inhale, softening the lower body, gaze at the thumbs, walk the feet forward, and allow yourself to just hang. So in beginner yoga, we're, it's not heavy on those vinyasas. Usually if we do a vinyasa, that sun salutation, it's only once, maybe twice max. So this is a little bit more Hatha style. And we move a little slower. We stay in poses a little bit longer. If you don't like this upside down feeling though, remember you can always lift the chest halfway, supporting your hands on your shins or even a table or a block. Otherwise, if you enjoy this, hang out here a couple more breaths. Maybe let your body sway side to side if you like. And on our inhale, we'll start activate your, your navel, pull your navel to your spine. Beautiful. Then on an exhale, we'll let the knees bend a little bit to shift the weight into our heels so that we can inhale, rise all the way up, and exhale, those hands to our hearts. So if you find that you're way at the back of your mat, you may want to move a little bit to the front because we will be doing some backward stepping. So from here, take your inhale. As we exhale, we're gonna take this left foot, stepping it back about three-ish feet behind the right. So maybe not as wide of a stance as we would take for a lunge. And we're gonna to start to straighten this front right leg. Now think about your hips in this position. When we come into here, our right hip tends to be a little bit in front of the left hip. Bring your hands onto your hips and shift that so that your hips are in this straight line across. Take the inhale, then as we exhale, we're gonna to start to hinge at the hips. You're gonna probably start to feel some action in that hamstring right away. You can start to slide the right hand down, and then the left hand and right hand can meet the floor. They can meet a yoga block. They can meet a chair in front of you. As we come into this pyramid pose, my chest is lifted. Keep thinking about pulling the, the left, should I say right earlier, that front leg. Pull that front hip bone. It's your right leg. Yeah, it's right. See, when we teach fitness, we forget which is right and left. So pulling that right hip bone back, which brings that pelvis into alignment. Nice. And then just lowering the chest a little bit down towards the quad as feels manageable to you. Maybe let the head fall a bit. Nice. Deep, deep stretch. And then on our inhale, we're gonna lift the chest back up. Now what we're gonna do is walk, so our right foot is in front. We're gonna to start to walk the hands towards the left. And I'm just gonna let my feet turn with me till I walk all the way around and my left leg is in front and my right leg is in the back. I'm gonna do this kind of reverse order. So we're gonna come up on this side, but even down here in this position, think about pulling the left hip back, right hip shifts forward, lowering that chest down, nose comes towards our shin. So this deep pyramid pose. And then on our inhale, we're gonna lengthen through the spine, starting to lift it halfway. This is where it's gonna be a little bit 
tricky here. So you can always place your hands on your quads or you can start to lift the hands to the hips and raising that chest up, right? Pull that left hip back. Now we're gonna go a little bit quicker, but we're gonna reverse order this. So we're gonna start to hinge forward, feeling that strain between the stretch and the strength, and then releasing the hands down, pulling the chin down towards the shin, then on our inhale, lifting the chest halfway, starting to walk the hands back around to the right, letting the feet move with you. Great. Hinging, lowering the nose towards the shin. Then inhale, lifting it up. And this is where we're gonna come all the way up. So use your leg to walk up as needed or pulling the core in, hands come to your hips. All the way up and step it forward. Beautiful, big inhale, the arms come up and exhale, the arms come down. Placing those hands onto the mat, we're gonna step back into that plank position, pausing here. So here's kind of our little bit of a mini vinyasa sort of, as we work our way back and through. Knees can be down, you could come to cat cow or child's pose here, or hold this plank. Feel that strength in your body. Take your inhale and our exhale. We're just pressing back to downward facing dog. Take an inhale. As we exhale, we're gonna lower down onto our knees. So coming back into all fours. So we just did some deep stretching through the back of our leg. We're gonna get some stretching through the front of our leg. As we inhale, lift that right leg, knee bent 90 degrees right here. Beautiful, now here comes some balancing. We're gonna take this left arm and lift it in front of us. Nice. Now this left hand, I'm gonna follow my thumb as I bring my left hand around, looking for my right foot and lifting. So twisting and hip flexor opening. And then I'm gonna release, bring the hand back center, place down the knee, place down the hand. And let's try that on the other side. So lift the left leg, right? Lift the right arm, not balancing. Follow the right thumb till I can see my foot back there. Engage and lift, twist and lift. Now, if you can't reach it, no worries, right? We're just reaching for it. And release. Uh, curl the toes under. Press back into downward facing dog. Now we're gonna get a little deeper into that hamstring or that hip flexor. That was just some warm up balance work. On our inhale, we're gonna take this right leg, rise it, and start to walk it or step it through to our hands. Shift and stretch that left leg back behind you. Come down onto that left knee, uncurl the left toes. And then on our inhale, start to lift up. Right, so now we're getting even deeper into that hip flexor, but we don't have to balance quite so much. Excellent. Now if you like, bring that left arm up, opening and stretching even more. Beautiful. Take the inhale on the exhale, the left hand comes down, the right hand comes up, twisting to the right. Gaze up towards that right thumb. Take the inhale. On the exhale, this right hand comes down, curl the left toes on her, lifting up. We're gonna push back enough to gain control over this right leg so that I can bring this right leg across my mat as I move towards pigeon, right? So slide that left leg long behind you, lengthen through the spine, allow yourself to come forward, pulling up off of that right hip a little bit, getting deep into the glute. 
And then I still get twisty here in a moment. I'm working on some twistiness. So from here, my right leg is in front. I'm gonna lift myself up enough, like we did in the beginning. I'm gonna take this left arm and thread it underneath the right, lay down towards that left shoulder. Uh, that's really gonna give you a good glute stretch. Now I can keep my right hand down for support, or I can raise that right arm up into the air. I can even let this right arm fall behind me bending it behind me and I could maybe bind this pose if my right hand can find the right big toe down there and grab a hold of it. Now, if the twist is too deep, too much on the hip, don't worry about it, don't twist. I mean, it's all about where we are. One more breath. And on the inhale, the right arm will come up. And on the exhale, the right arm comes down. And on the inhale, pressing our way up, curl the left toes to press back into downward facing dog or child's pose or cat cow. Take a breath or two, dance your dog. Just feel that movement in your body. We'll take that through the other side when you're ready. So we'll inhale the left leg. We can walk it across our mat or we can try to sweep it up between our hands. Slide the right leg long, drop the right knee, uncurl the right toes. I can stay right here and raise that chest. Come deeper into that right hip flexor. Maybe raise the right arm. Welcome, by the way, Britt, who snuck in down there on me. Take the inhale. On the exhale, plant the right hand down, plant the left hand down, curl the right toes, pressing back enough to give yourself space to bring this left leg across, reaching the right leg long, pulling up off of that left hip a little bit as we come down into pigeon. And you're welcome to lay all the way down on your belly. I tend to like to be up on my forearms. I feel like I have a little more control. I can shift my body around a little bit more looking for that just right spot. Two more breaths here. And on our inhale, lifting the chest enough to bring the right arm under. So way towards that right shoulder. My left hand can stay where it is, or I can start to open it up. I can let it reach behind me, maybe binding with the toes. Try to keep the neck long. So I know I have the tendency to like tuck my chin here. I'm going to try to keep the neck long. This is quite an ankle stretch too. So if you have any ankle issues, I always feel it on this side. And then on the inhale, the left arm comes up and down, pressing up and through, curling the back toes and press back to that downward facing dog. Again, down dog, child's pose, cat cow. Take a few breaths. Let your body move. And then from here, we're going to bring our feet up to our hands. We can walk and we can step and we can hop them. But we're going to take them out wide. So my heels are going to land on my mat, my toes slightly off. And I'm going to slowly work my way down into this deep yogi squat, this malasana. Now, if you have a yoga block, a yoga block can come in real handy. You can always sit on your yoga block here, which is like fabulous. It'll let you stay here a little bit longer. And then if we're feeling good, we can bring those hands to our heart, use our elbows to press the knees away. I'm just gonna turn in face. You got one more 
little twisty series coming up here. Uh, and so we're gonna drop the right hand down. That right elbow is gonna stay right inside that right knee. And I'm gonna twist up through the left. I can make a fist as well if that bothers my wrist. Maybe let this arm reach behind me. Let me twist a little deeper. And then come back center. Left hand stays down. Right arm lifts up. Maybe it opens up behind me. Inhale, it comes up. Exhale, it comes down. On my inhale, start to rise my tailbone towards the sky. Take your heels and turn them away from each other so that your toes kind of stay where they are a little bit closer together. One last forward fold here as I bring my forehead down towards the floor with a deeper stretch along the outer side of the ankle in this pigeon-toed forward fold. Feel free to adjust your feet as needed. Trying to shift that weight a little bit so it's not 100% in the heels. Bring it into the ball of the foot as well. On the inhale, lifting up through the chest. Take the toes, turn them towards your left. And we'll just step back into our down dog from there. Coming down to our knees and setting back into a child's pose. Your knees can be together or apart, whatever feels best to you. Take a nice exhale as you sink your armpits, sink your chest down towards the floor. On our inhale, we're going to shimmy our way out onto our belly, working into either sphinx or seal. So sphinx would be pulling the elbows under us. Squeeze the glutes, pull the belly button forward as you lift up through your chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. So a lot of contraction through the back of the body, but that stretch through the front. And if everything feels good here and you want to come up to your hands and just seal, it will hug the elbows in if they are out in front of us. Squeeze the glutes. If this doesn't feel good, feel free to stay in seal. Lifting the heart. Couple of breaths. Take the inhale. On the exhale, slowly lower yourself back down. We're going to bring the palms of the hands, stack one hand on top of the other. Let your forehead rest on your hands. Let your legs just hang out into crocodile pose. And we'll take a few breaths here. This will take us to the end of our time together. So you're welcome at any time to roll over into Shavasana, or you can take your Shavasana here in crocodile. giving your body a minute to feel the tension leave, feel the softening through the belly, through the back. As we come to the end of our time together, as always, I invite you to stay here. I invite you to roll over and take a couple of minutes in Shavasana if you like. So take your time as you get ready to go back to life. So maybe if you stay on your belly, maybe you push back to your child's pose for a couple of breaths. 
Right? And then maybe when you're ready, you would push up and take a couple of cat cows. But I'm going to go ahead and log you out so you can kind of take that time to move as you like. Thank you so much for joining me. The love and light in me honors the love and light in you. Namaste.